Hello and welcome to lesson 46 of the Learning Guitar series. Uh, before we start, I would like to thank um, the patrons that are supporting this project uh, and making it possible. Uh, it's now many of you, so I, uh, I really thank you for believing in, uh, in this idea. Um, in this particular lesson, we're going to discuss some uh, practical applications of what we've done so far uh, using pentatonics. We're not done with pentatonics yet, in terms of there's going to be further lessons, in particular regarding um, pentatonic harmony. But at this stage, I thought it would be good to start looking at, you know, a couple of practical applications of what we studied so far. Um, first of all, let's look at um, diatonic progressions and... Basically, what I'm what I'm what I mean by that is a lot of pop songs, a lot of pop songs. I have a, a very simple chord progression here. I'll show it to you. Um, a minor, F, C, G seven. Let's say, you know, I opened. It, it is actually a pop song. <laughs> As a matter of fact, uh, can't remember now. I, there is tons of songs that have that kind of progression. What's important to us is uh, to understand, okay, what key if we are in any specific key and uh, if this progression is diatonic. And by diatonic, in case you don't know, I mean like harmonization on major scales. And I have a chart for that. We discussed this in lesson 16. We're going to look at it again now. So don't worry. The vocabulary right now it sounds more complicated than it is. All is happening. I looked at the chord progression of a pop song that I liked. And I want to figure out if it is in any specific key. And once I figure that out, I will know what pentatonic I can use over it, uh, you know, to do a solo. And then I'll show you also like a nice little trick. So when we're looking at chord progressions, say for example this one. Let's say there's like, you know, one bar of A minor, one bar of F, one bar of C, one bar of G7. In order for me to figure out if this tune is in any particular key, what you want to look at is at this particular chart I uploaded, I think, in week um, 16 when we started discussing harmonic theory. These are basically major scales, Ionian scales. I used all keys so that you can literally print this out and have it as a reference uh, when you need it so you don't have to memorize all of it. And this is the harmonization of it. Uh, if you don't know how we got from this to this, that's when you want to have a look at the lesson 16, but more or less. As you can see, when we look at the harmony of any particular key, there is two major chords, chord number four, chord number, chord number one, and chord number four. There is three minor chords, chord number two, chord number three, chord number six, a dominant seven chord, chord number five, and an alpha diminished chord, which is chord number seven. If you look at this progression, C major, D minor, E minor, F, G7, A minor, B, um, minor 7, flat 5, of all diminished. As in, I know I'm repeating myself, but if this is C major as a scale, that particular progression is only the harmonization of this scale, and so it's C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G7, A minor, E half diminished, C major. So it's the harmonization of this particular scale. And this is what we call, you know, a diatonic scale. And so if the progression is diatonic, we can kind of figure out in which key we are. Now, since our progression had an A minor in it, what I would do, I mean, there's different ways you can do this. There's many different ways. But what I can do, so I know that there is three minor chords, which means that diatonically, the A minor can be chord number six for somebody. In this case, it would be chord number six in the key of C. Of course, it can also be chord number two, and it's in fact, you find it here, in the key of G. So where G is number one, so the key of G major, A minor will be chord number two. And it can also be chord number three somewhere. In fact, we'll find it here. And it's chord number three when we are in the key of F. So F is chord number one. So, and these are the only three possibilities, because as we said, a minor chord can be in three positions. So A minor can belong to three different keys. It can be chord number six for C, chord number two for G, 
and chord number 3 for F. But now let's look at the rest of the chords, because this progression is made up of several chords. Let's see if any of those three keys also contains F, C, and eventually G7. And in this case it's pretty straightforward, because if you look at the key of C, okay, C is here, F is here, and G7 is here. Hence, we're definitely in the key of C. All this progression is diatonic in the key of C. Let's see if it could be any other key, just for the sake of uh, argument. If I look at the E minor when it was chord number 2, I also have G, although it's not G7. I also have C, but then I don't have F. In fact, I have F sharp. So I'm excluding this, you know, this key. And we also had A minor in the key of F, but as you can see, G here is G minor. Instead, we're looking for G7, okay? When a progression has a dominant 7 chord in it, like in this case, it makes even thing easier in terms of finding, and we're trying to see if, it, if the entire progression belongs to a single key. For the, for the simple fact that there is only a dominant 7 chord when you look at this entire diatonic progression, there's only one dominant 7 chord. So a dominant 7 chord can only be in one position, let's put it that way. And so G7 automatically tells me, okay, key of C, and then I would check, okay, E minor also in there, and F is also in there. One peculiarity about pop music at times is sometimes the dominant 7 chord, in this case G7, is not spelled as G7 in the charts. You know, like if you look for corporations online, or you look, I don't know, a Dire Straits song or something like this, you'll find it as G as opposed to G7. So the first three notes, just to try it. So sometimes you might find, instead of G7, you might literally find your chord chart, you might find literally G. Which can be a little bit confusing because it might not give you exactly the idea of which one is the dominant chord, I mean which one is the tension, and then resolves the song. But nevertheless, if we look at uh, our example, our chart, even if I think in terms of A minor, F, C, and G, and I'm, looking, I'm using A minor as a starting point to find out which key am I in. If I look at A minor, and all the five chords, they become, instead of being G7, G sharp, A flat, they become like G, G sharp, A flat. Uh, by the simple reason that we're not extending the chord. So instead of, we're just playing the triad, instead of playing G7, we're using G. And this is very common in pop music where, although the chords would be chord number five, dominant chords, because, you know, we're just playing them as triads. So in the chart, you will not find G7, you'll find just, in this case, you will find just G. But, again, this doesn't make things over complicated in a way, because again, if I look at the chart and if I look, I use A minor as a reference, then F, G, and C, okay, I'm still in the key of C, fair enough. And if I look at A minor as a chord number 2 for F, F is in there, but then there is G minor. So definitely we are not in the key of F. And if I look at G, A minor is in there, G is in there, fair enough, as a triad. C is in there, still good, but then there is no F, there is F sharp. So, so again, I can look at that progression and, and be like, okay, it's definitely in the key of C. If it, once I figured that out, and I suggest, you know, you take some pop song, it can be anything, Dire Straits, uh, I don't know, Rihanna, <laughs> whatever, whatever, you know, it is that you like. Uh, I'm sure you can Google, you know, what's the chord progression of that particular song that you like, and you notice most of the time, you know, you're looking at progressions, which are like, you know, verses and colors made of four chords, sometimes two, okay? Uh, in this case, we have A minor. F, C, G. I'm sure you heard tones of progression. <laughs> it, it, sounding pretty much like this. Um, we know it's in the key of C. Now our next step in terms of pentatonics <clears throat> is, okay, C major pentatonic would resolve the entire progression. But since we discussed everything in minor, I'm looking at the relative minor. So here, I'm looking at A minor pentatonic, okay? To resolve the entire, you know, I want to take a solo over that, and uh, I can use A minor pentatonic 
to resolve it. And I'll, and I'll show it to you in a second. So I'm going to loop this progression and then I'm going to play a little bit on top of it. As you can see, it works. It's, it's that easy in a way. Um, because okay, we're faced with a diatonic progression. Like all the chords of the song belong to the same key. Okay, let me figure out. Sometimes it's obvious the key they're in. I mean, the first chord, say, if this progression was, I don't know, C major, A minor, D minor, G. The fact that it feels like a resting point in C, remember the concept of tension resolution with this gust, kind of, or is already a hint that the song is in C. Okay, in the case C major, which means A minor pentatonic, and that solves its entire progression. Nevertheless, you know, if you are not used to this, this idea of, you know, hearing where the resolution is and then checking that all the chords might belong to that key, this is the chart that you want to use, okay? And of course you look at it horizontally and say, okay, do all the chords of any particular song that you're looking at, do they belong to one single key? Because if they do, okay, look at chord number one in terms of the song is in the key of one of these. And then in terms of pentatonic, look, start, look at number six. Now let me show you a trick, a kind of a bluesy trick, since we discussed also like how to use pentatonics on dominant seven chords. So when it comes to G7 in this case, although I'm, uh, I might introduce it even a little bit earlier. Same progression. I'm going to play first a little bit. I'll improvise a little bit. Um, 20 seconds, literally. And then I'll explain you what's going on. But you'll notice a difference of sounds from time to time. What happened? Well, little trick. In <laughs> practical terms, I'm alternating A minor pentatonic, and from time to time, when you when you heard that kind of bluesy feel, I was using I was using C minor pentatonic. Okay, remember we are in the key of C, C major, and in fact we're using the relative minor A minor in terms of the pentatonic we're using over this progression. But if you remember our lesson on how to use um, pentatonics over dominant seven chords, from time to time, what I'm superimposing, I mean, what I'm, what I'm using, literally, is C minor pentatonic. I use G as a reference point because it's G7 in the progression. And this is C minor pentatonics. And these are the effects I'm getting. Sharp 9, sharp 5. The rest is common to a mixolydian. So I have an 11 here and a flat 7. Nothing, and the root note, obviously. And the reason it feels bluesy, 
is very, very common, actually. Like, at the end of the day, say, for G7, imagine this was a blues. For G7, you would have used maybe G minor. So the sharp nine is definitely, which is your, is definitely a sound we are used to, okay? When I'm using C major, uh, sorry, C minor pentatonic over C major, that's C major. I'm creating some alterations, and in particular in that progression, I'm applying that kind of alterations when the G7 is coming. So, progression is... And it gives us that kind of bluesy feel. In a way, it's easy to remember this particular trick. Because, as we said, the song is in the QC, and whenever we want to be let's say cheesy, you're using A minor pentatonic. And A minor pentatonic is covering the entire diatonic progression. So no matter what chord is going on, like the C, the F, the A minor, G, our A minor pentatonic is covering that. I don't really have to think chord changes. And every time I want to create a tension, I can go, what's the key, C major? I'm using C minor pentatonic. And that will create a tension. And the moment I move from C minor pentatonic to A, back to A minor pentatonic, also from a solo point of view, you're creating tension resolution, okay? This particular song resolves in A minor. Again, if you, you might want to look at lesson 16, if, um, if you don't know what I'm talking about in terms of tension resolution. But dominant seven chords, so in this case G7, they tend to resolve other in major, so five to one. They want to go back to the one chord. So this wants to go here. Or they want to go to chord number six, so the relative minor. And is the you know the minor version of a major resolution. So as you can see they both resolve. So the G7 can resolve into C major and you know it feels like the end of the song and it can resolve into A minor and it still feel like, uh, feels like the end of the song. And I know it's a kind of uh, cheesy analogy, but you know, hap you know, you have some sort of feels happy, feel, you know, when it ends in major. It feels a bit like me more sad if it ends in minor, but nonetheless, that's the tension resolution. So more likely I'll be using C minor pentatonic for, I don't know, over F, over C, or over G. Anytime I feel like I want to create some tension, and then the moment the A minor chord comes, I'll resolve it into the A minor pentatonic. Let's see what it, what it sounds like. Let's see. I hope it makes sense, but you know, just to recap it, because actually as a concept it's very simple. I have a chord progression, uh, I'm going to check if the entire chord progression belongs diatonically to one single key, because if that does, like in this case it does, I can simply look, okay, what's chord number one? In this case chord number one was C major. I can look at the relative minor, in this case A minor, and, and, and know, okay, I can use A minor pentatonic and just solo over this progression. And it's gonna sound nice. You know. I can also kind of spice it up a little bit. And if I wanna spice it up a little bit from time to time and create extra tension, I can use whatever it was, chord number one. In this case, C, I'm using C minor pentatonic. 
if this progression, say, different kind of progression, and it turns out everything is in the key of E. Uh, let's see. I'll, I, I will just do it. I know all these chords belong to the key of, key of E. Let's, let's do it this way. Let me do it this. So I'm in the key of E, the relative minor is C sharp, okay? In fact, check this out. Now if I want to spice it up, I'm in the key of E, E minor, will do. Check this out. C sharp, E. And I'm resolving it, okay? I was making it obvious using this shape and this shape so you could see, okay, he's playing E minor now, or he's playing C sharp minor. But the progression was E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor. And again, if we look at our chart, let's have a look at the key of E. E, F sharp minor, G sharp minor. I'm just using chord number one, chord number two, chord number three, the key of E. You know, and I'm, again, I'm sure you heard many songs like that. By the way, I feel like this guitar is a little bit out of tune, and yeah, it's not very professional on me. <laughs> Every time I use this guy, and I do apologize about that. Um, now, let's look at a different application. In this case, I'm going to look at the opposite extreme. Um, I'm literally going to take some some random chords. Okay, I'm going to use four random chords belonging to four different keys. Okay, I cannot make it more complicated than this in a way. And and uh, and I'm going to show you a nice little trick. Again, I'm going to do this in other lessons too, eventually, because you know this is a good thing to understand and to know. Um, I can assure you this is pretty much uh, random in terms of progressions. So, um, let's take this off. Let's say... Let's say we have C, the chord progression. This is the chord progression, okay? C, I don't know, B flat minor. Uh, going into I don't know, D major and going into A flat minor. Okay, this this four chords. If I was to look into um, this chart, you're not gonna find them. Uh, maybe two might belong to the same key, but you know we're looking at literally using four different keys. But in this case, uh, sorry, in this case, I'm not really bothered with figuring out if any of these belong to any particular key. I'm just going to take them individually as they are. And these are major and minor chords in this case. And when we looked at our pentatonics, we saw that for a major chord, so in this case C, I could use A minor pentatonic, I can use E minor pentatonic, and I can use B minor pentatonic, and this last one will give me some sort of a lydian kind of feel, okay? For B flat minor, I'm gonna go like just kind of a dorian -y kind of approach. So for B, minor, B flat minor, I can use B flat minor pentatonic, okay? We also know that we can use F minor pentatonic, okay? And if I wanna sound dorian, um, I can place a tone up play C minor pentatonic and then I'll also work. I could go a tone down, I could go a fourth down and get like a um, aeolian kind of sounds. I can get we can go A flat minor pentatonic and we could go also E flat minor pentatonic. 
in the in the for D we can go B minor pentatonic. Um, we can also go F sharp minor pentatonic. And we can go C sharp minor pentatonic. And again, this is the Lydian kind of feel. A flat, we can go A flat minor pentatonic. Uh, we know that we can go E flat minor pentatonic. We also know that we can go B flat minor pentatonic. That will give us uh, some sort of a lead of a dorian feel. Again, if we want a phrygian feel, we can go F sharp minor pentatonic. And if we want a phrygian slash aeolian kind of feel, we can go a fourth. So that will be D flat minor pentatonic. So with this ball doesn't matter. So and now, as you can see, this is a little bit more involved. But bear in mind that we're using a random chord progression, uh, which is going across four different keys. So this is, you know, in musical terms, is rather complicated. But now if we look at it this way, okay, for C, I can play A minor pentatonic. B flat, I'm just going a semitone up from it. Couldn't it be easier. For D, I'm using B minor pentatonic, which again is a semitone up. Okay? For A flat, I could stay in B flat minor pentatonic. So it makes this part kind of easier. Or I can go to ritually like a tone and off down. So this becomes kind of a cycle. And I can use parallel motions to do that. Okay? Or I could go E minor, going into F, which is a semitone up, as we said, going to F sharp, which is a semitone up from this, going into A flat, which is a tone up from this. Uh, in other words, so like I say, if I, I could use E minor, I'm going to do it up here so you can see like, you know, a kind of pentatonic kind of thing. Like, I'm playing. Then I'm going a semitone up. Then I'm going a semitone up. And then I'm going a tone up. Then I'm in A flat. And then I could go, I mean, I, again, this is when it gets interesting. A bit mental, but it's really interesting. Because if I start here, I can go A minor, F minor. F sharp minor, A flat minor, and this puts me a semitone away from this. A minor, B flat minor, B minor, right? Pentatonic. And then if I want, you know, like this is E flat, which kind of puts me a semitone away from this, and this becomes a circular kind of thing. Now, let's let's take it one little bit at a time. So I'm going to record the progression. I mean, I have no idea what this is going to sound like. It's rather random, okay? But so I'm going to be very unmusical, obviously. We'll see. Uh, I'll try and keep the chords a little bit longer than I did before, so there is time for me to talk to you about it, and also like to for you to visualize it. So let's see. quite angular. So we're gonna use A minor pentatonic for the C chord, B flat minor pentatonic, so A minor pentatonic, B flat minor pentatonic, B minor pentatonic, A flat minor pentatonic. Now, as you can see, this becomes incredibly easy to solo on. I'm just shifting my pentatonics, in this case in semitones. So for C I'm using A minor, for B flat I'm using B flat minor pentatonic, for the D chord I'm using B minor pentatonic, and for the A flat minor I'm using A flat minor. The other solution was to start from E minor, I can do it here, so like that you can see it happening going into F minor, going into F sharp, going into A flat. And you'll see, like, you get different kind of vibes, but still, pretty much.
A minor pentatonic. B flat. B minor. A flat. E minor. F minor. F sharp. A flat. A minor. Sorry for the last note. <laughs> but I hope you understand where I'm going with this. I mean, like, bear in mind, I mean, we, we just used minor pentatonics. I actually used the most common shapes, you know, like something that you're probably very familiar with. And we, we negotiated a very angular and complicated chord progression. This is not diatonic at all. So one pentatonic is not going to solve them all, all the progression. But... The moment I lay down what we studied in the last four or five lessons, so what, what kind of pentatonics I can use for a major chord, what kind of pentatonics I can use for a minor chord, which in this case covers this progression here, I can find simple solutions where I'm moving my pentatonic shapes in semitones. You know, I'm just moving little, I'm just moving a little on, on the neck. So, it, you know, even if I'm changing a scale, mm. Every single chord, I'm changing scale, literally. Every chord has got its own scale. It's got a life on its own. There is no one scale that I can cover all the progression, like we did with the diatonic. But still, it's possible. Does it make sense? You, know, you only know a minor pentatonic, and still you can negotiate a very you know, angular and difficult progression. So my suggestion in terms of practicing this, as I said, transcribe some, uh, transcribe, or find the chord progression of some pop songs you like, and as an exercise, figure out Okay, is this progression diatonic to any particular key? If it is, you can use one pentatonic, you know, to solo all over it. But also maybe write down some literally some random chord progression using major and minor chord in this case. I'm gonna do this in the future also using dominant seven. But start from, you know, just the progression or maybe just major chords. You know? Just make it random so that, you know, they're not diatonic. Um, different keys are happening, okay? And as you can see, like, it's actually not that hard. You write it on paper like I just did. And then, uh, you know, and then you, you just play. So as you can see, I, I kind of showed you, hopefully, two, two applications that you can have of minor pentatonics to where we studied them, very far apart, okay? The diatonic one, very simple. The entire chord progression, one scale. Does it all. Okay? And also showed you a trick to create some tension in there. On the other hand of the spectrum, a random progression. Four chords, four different scales. But by listing where we can go with it, we can find pathways across the neck, which are not too hard. You don't end up doing this and having to think too much. You're just moving things up and down. Uh, we're going to come back to this. I know it's a lot of talking as usual, you know, hopefully that didn't confuse you. But uh, if something is not clear and you have any question, please like feel free to drop me a comment. I'm more than happy to explain it more. And, uh, well, as usual, thank you. Thank you for listening to my rambling about guitar. And again, thank you to those that are supporting this project. Uh, I know I ask a lot of you in terms of attention spam, especially when, you know, everything on, online seems, seems to be very short and very edited. 
and I don't do those kind of things because I don't know. Learning guitar takes time, okay? It's not if if you want to learn it properly. Hopefully this is giving you some, some ideas, some things you can do. Anyway, thank you to the patrons for supporting this idea. Thank you for anybody who's subscribing to the YouTube channel. Uh, I appreciate you all. And uh, until next time, bye.